And good afternoon again, leading age friends and colleagues. So reflecting on my past two years as your chair, for me has been a bit like staring into a rearview mirror while the car continues to speed forward. You can do that only for so long without getting terribly dizzy or worse, crashing the vehicle altogether. The reality is, even in this time of transformation and significant transition, leading age, its board, and its leadership continues to move forward with su surprising speed and increasing effectiveness. This has been the fastest two years of my life, a wonderful whirlwind of learning, growing, and meeting new friends and colleagues like you who continue to inspire me with the work that you do. It's been a blessing to me personally and a privilege professionally, and I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Like so many other times in my life, the return to me has been greater than the contribution I've made. And that's thanks to the richness you bring to your work each and every day. By far, what I've enjoyed the most in this role as your chair is visiting with you at the various state conferences, meeting with our state boards, engaging members on your home turf. I've had opportunity to travel from New York to Arizona, Washington to Kansas, and many points in between. I even went to Ohio. I'm from Michigan. I went to Ohio, Columbus, and it was great. Members come in all shapes and sizes, and each of our state partners is different in so many ways, but this experience has taught me that the core DNA of leading age is the same. We come from the same roots of service, of quality, commitment to community, and a desire to improve the lives of seniors, their loved ones, and their caregivers. This fact has been constant and consistent wherever my travels took me. And the board has worked incredibly hard these past two years, always leaning in, always asking the hard questions, always forcing the deliberations to go deeper and farther. We've wrestled with what it means to be an effective nonprofit in the aging services field and developed our Thrive initiative as a result. Thrive is intended to put tools in your hands to help you and your boards have greater impact in the local community where you serve. We've looked ahead to a failing payment system for long-term services and supports in America and have advanced our Pathways project to shape societal dialogue and political debate. But we're not content with just creating good conversation. Our Pathways project is intended to find its way into the upcoming presidential elections and ultimately onto the floor of Congress for action. In addition to all this, your board has also been incredibly focused on this little matter of leadership transition, knowing that the most important task of any board is choosing its CEO to lead into the future. When I first became active with Leading Age nearly 15 years ago, we had a somewhat new CEO whose reputation as a national impact leader was just beginning. At that time, I'm absolutely sure I met at least 100 people who claimed personal responsibility for hiring Larry Minix. Just like an iconic moment in sports where more people claimed to have been there than the stadium could have possibly held, so it was with Larry and his arrival at Leading Age. So we either had a search committee the size of the US Senate, or folks just wanted to have some emotional stake in claiming that they hired Larry, who, in the course of time, changed the trajectory of aging services in America. In a, yeah, he has. In addition, Larry's been a friend and a mentor to many of us. I feel particularly privileged to have served as board chair during this time of transition. Sure, it required a little more work, a little additional focus, but to be part of the bridge from the Minix era to the future, which is brighter than ever, has been a particularly rewarding part of the job. The search itself was robust, credible, and thorough with dozens of impressive candidates becoming known to the committee. In the end, our future leader was among us. I'm reminded of the fact that in his book, Good to Great, Jim Collins points out that great organization sustained that greatness most often by transitioning leadership from within. And I'm confident that's what we've done here. I'm looking forward to this next new era for leading age. I'm excited to see where Katie Sloan will take us building on the strong legacy of the past, but pushing us to new and exciting places. 
and I'm sure that our new Leading Age Chair, Catherine Roberts, is the right person for the moment, and she and Katie will launch us into an exciting future, impactful in our advocacy and effective in our work. So as I transition out of this privileged chair role, I want, I want to make sure I take the opportunity to thank my family, my childhood sweetheart and best friend, who happens to be my wife, Elaine, for your love and support and sacrifice, my staff and board back home, some of who are here, who filled in gaps and stepped up in new ways to expand your own leadership capacity. I'm proud of you all. And I want to thank all of you for this incredible opportunity. I'm humbled by the experience and inspired by you all. This I know for sure. We will miss Larry and his incredible impact and his contributions to this field will endure. But I also know this, the future couldn't be brighter as we look to Katie and her leadership, partnering with the board, our state partners, and all of you to transform the aging experience in America. So thank you and God bless. back already.